Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. We are looking at plate tectonics and continental drift theory. So we discussed in a previous video all about Alfred J. Wegener. And he was this German uh, scientist, astronomer, uh, meteorologist who would travel around in places like Greenland and Europe, North America, their areas, and conduct these experiments. And he started to have this idea that all the continents were once connected in this supercontinent called Pangaea, and this occurred around 250 million years ago. I have a really crazy theory, but he was determined to prove uh, and, and basically gather evidence to support this theory that he had. And obviously the first one that he kind of like jumped on and uh, used as his first main bit of evidence was puzzle fit. And mentioned before in a different video that um, historically maps have been of the Middle East, Africa, Europe, maybe South, Southeast Asia because of the, the uh, growth in population in these areas first, especially the Middle East. Um, but North America and South America were drawn on maps as early, really, I mean, the main one really that um, was detailed was 1789. So 1798 by a guy named Finley. And in before that, uh, Bacon, Francis Bacon, uh, had mentioned back in the uh, 1570s that the possibility that South America as a continent would fit nicely into Africa was then it was then expressed. And the maps started to support that. Um, in the late 18th century and early 19th century. So the puzzle fit was used by Wegener as a good, and he basically looked at the continental shelf, continental shelf, which is the area of land that is under the ocean by the coastline, but still part of the continent that extends away from the coastline X amount of you know, miles into the ocean, and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper as you go away from the coastline. So this shelf, uh, they looked at the, the shelf basically at 900 meters, and they found that it was a pretty good, pretty close to perfect fit. And as you can see by my amazing diagram and drawing that the, the coastline of Brazil, basically right here, and the coastline of Western Africa around like Ivory Coast, Ghana, and... Uh, Nigeria, that area, the Congo down here, that's where pretty much that looks to be a good puzzle fit. And that was the first thing that kind of led him to investigate further and find more of his evidence. And he stayed around South America and Africa, and he started looking at fossil evidence. And the fossil evidence was in two parts. Well, first part, but Part A was the, the animals, the animal fossils that you found. And in particular, the animal was called Mesosaurus. Now, this was a reptile uh, that was existed about 275 to 325 million years ago. So during Pangaea, when Pangaea was a supercontinent and South America was joined with Africa, and it was further down uh, towards um, the higher latitudes in the southern hemisphere. The Mesosaurus existed in this part of South America, through modern-day Argentina, down through modern-day Chile, and then obviously um, through this part of western, southwestern Africa, basically, this area through South Africa, uh, and these various countries over here. So the cool thing is, that Mesosaurus was a freshwater, or mostly had, mostly was found in freshwater environments. And it was found to be a animal that which could not tolerate salt water. Well, that's kind of funny because present day South America and Africa are separated by a very nice thing called the Atlantic Ocean. And it is salt water. So it's uh, more than 1% salt concentration, salt water. So the likelihood that this, this ancient animal could um, 
basically go through the ocean, uh, you know, at least you know, one and a half thousand mile ocean of salt water and survive is highly unlikely. The likelihood is that they are both found on both sides of Atlantic is because in the past, these two continents were joined and that would be the logical answer as this animal could not swim or survive in salt water for very long. So that was a big piece of evidence that Wegener had discovered. So he found the animal fossil evidence. Now he looked at the plant, um, the fauna uh, evidence. And he found this one plant that, again, existed the same kind of time, about 250 million years ago, and Glossopteris. And it was found all over Gondwana. Now, Gondwana was South America, Africa, uh, modern-day Australasia. Ah, a bit better. Australasia, okay, and India as well, and all across obviously Antarctica as well. So, five of these main land masses were all joined together, and it was called Gondwana or Gondwana land. And he found this, this plant species all around deposits in rock layers all around um, Gondwana. And again, so he found it in this part of South America, this part of Africa, southern part of India, um, northern part of Antarctica, or this part of Antarctica, and Australia. So again, I'm not sure about everyone, but I know that plants don't really get up and move. And migrate the pollen does and uh that the way that the plants um uh move and 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 start to uh like basically cover different areas pollen is the way that they do that however the pollen of this plant was very heavy or heavy and it was it's, it's seen or been suggested that because of the size of this pollen, it could not make the journey across the Atlantic either way. So the, that, that one and a half, two thousand mile journey by wind across an ocean would be very unlikely for a heavy fossil uh, pollen like this plant. And it's more likely, much more likely that these two continents were all joined together. That way, you would see that easier migration of pollen over a larger area if it's all connected. So there we have just the puzzle fit and then Wegner's development of this theory using both fossil evidence of plants and animals to suggest that Pangaea existed. So the next bit of evidence he found, number three, was rocks and geology and mountain ranges, orogeny, and the age of the rocks. So first, he saw that uh, the Brazilian mountains, there's one L, two Ls, I'm not sure. Brazilian mountains, okay, were about 2.2 billion years old. And he also found the same corresponding age rock in Africa, 2.2 billion. Now, based on the composition of the rock, and there was a strong suggestion that they were the same rock, same mineral composition, same age. Therefore, they were basically part of one long system, one long um, range of mountains, and that uh, they were both connected in the past or during this time of formation, 2.2 billion years. Now, that doesn't involve Pangaea, but it started making him think, okay, what other areas or mountain ranges could be similar age or showing a connection. So when you put them all together like a puzzle piece, they fit perfectly, these, these mountain ranges. And he looked at, close to the home, close to Germany, he looked at Europe, Greenland, the British Isles, and he looked at North America, in particular, the Appalachian Mountains. And what he found was the Appalachians, the uh, little Atlas Mountains, in modern-day Morocco, the Cardonia Mountains in northern 
uh, Scotland, uh, Northern England, uh, Greenland, even Iceland to a certain extent, and Norway and Scandinavia were all the same rock. There was obviously metamorphic, some igneous base, metamorphic base with some uh, sedimentary formations. But the key was that the folding and the orogeny, which is the formation of mountains, how they formed, and also the age, the age, the folding, and the orogeny meant that when you move all them together, they line up. They all line up as one long range. And moving forward, modern day, uh, looking at historical geology and Pangaea and various other supercontinents, this mountain range was called the Central Central Pangaean Mountains. And they were basically with that large mountain range that basically separated Africa, um, Eastern Europe, and Eurasia with North America, Greenland uh, at that point. And this was when Pangaea was all connected. So once Pangaea started to break apart about 200 to 150 million years ago, that central Pangaean mountains were split. Some went to North America or stayed there, some stayed in Europe, and the Atlantic Ocean was born, but it separated these ancient mountain ranges. And the Appalachians were as high as the Rockies in the past and the Alps, but due to various other tectonic and uh, weather and erosion processes, the Appalachians have obviously been uh, scaled down um, somewhat than what the Rockies are. The final piece of evidence really to add to his collection, really to, to go and write his book, which is The Origins of Continents and Oceans in 1912, or 1915, sorry, and he started it in 1912, was the glacial deposits and ice sheets. Now, obviously, Antarctica has been under ice for about 35, 40 million years. And during Pangaea, it was still kind of the same location, but Africa, South America, uh, India, subcontinent, and Australasia were all basically into Antarctica, and they were all further south than they are obviously in the Southern Hemisphere, right down you know, in high latitudes. And what was really kind of most convincing evidence in my mind was that in modern day India, modern day Australia, modern day Africa, I should say Central Africa, and also in South America, modern day Southern Brazil and Argentina, he found glacial deposits which age around Pangaea. So the age of these deposits were around Pangaea time and the age of the ice deposits and also the sediment that is transported by the, the ice was found there as well. He also found striations which are when the ice moves over rock it starts to scrape the rock in a certain direction of the ice movement. So these were all, you know, why is it an awesome thing? Because India is incredibly hot all year round, basically. Australia is hot all year round. Central Africa, Savannah, Kenya, Mozambique, Tanzania, hot all year round, unless you are at very high elevations. Central South America, again, very hot, yet we found ice at certain depths in the rock suggesting and uh, given very strong supportive evidence that these parts of the world were connected to Antarctica during the time of Pangaea. So we have the puzzle fit, we have the rock ages, we have the fossil evidence, and we have my book, The Most Convincing, The Glacial Deposits and Ice Sheets in very currently warm climates that cannot support any kind of substantial ice accumulation because the climate's too hot it's too it's just too hot and yet he found it and he published the book in 1915 and we'll get on to what happened then and also a little um uh q 
cumulative wrap up um, of all the evidence together. All right. So if you like this uh, video, please subscribe. Thank you so much for listening.